Hello, before this video starts, this is one of the only times that I'll have a semi-sponsored video. It's not really a sponsored video. This is more something for my friend. So, basically, she has a go for me because she's going through a rough financial situation right now. So, I would really appreciate if you could donate. And if you donate, then you could send a message to me, actually, and I'll give you a free drawing for a digital art drawing for free of anything that you want. Literally anything that you want. Well, not, not anything inappropriate, but anything that you want that's appropriate. Okay? Anything that you want that's, you know, yeah. So, there we go. So, yes. If you donate to my friend's GoFundMe, then I'll give you a free digital drawing. So, there we go. And it could be literally, like, anything, just any amount, and I'll give you it. So, therefore, there we go. Just in case you guys want to don't, don't feel pressured, by the way, I'm just spreading the word for her, basically, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, on to the video. Hi. So, today I've decided that I'm going to do a sit-in show where I'm basically just talking and doing whatever. So, today, honestly, there's a lot on my mind. Um, well, I'm, I'm very anxious about certain things. One is that I'm, I'm debating a decision that I'm trying to make because, um, I don't want to go too much into detail about it now because I know that some of my friends that watch, it may impact them and stuff, and I'm not really ready to say a for sure decision because I'm not a hundred percent sure you know it has nothing to do with this channel by the way it has to do with personal life and stuff and I'm just afraid that the friends that's going to impact are going to hate me <laughs> that I'm making this decision but I feel as if I almost feel called to make the decision pretty much and it just, I feel as if it would be better for me, you know, and I was reluctant to make the decision. I was actually fighting so hard for the opposite decision, like, at first, um, and I really wanted to make the other decision that involved them being happy and also to add on just, I thought it was what was best for me at the time, you know? And I thought, hey, I want to make this decision. And I felt so sure of it because I thought to myself, this is what's going to make me happy because it was literally the only time in my life that I felt happy in, you know? But now thinking about it, I'm realizing that maybe I was too attached to the decision without making consideration for other decisions that I could make. And now I'm just, sorry for being vague about this, by the way, I just don't feel comfortable sharing what exactly it is yet, just because I'm going to make a video on it. And also to add on, um, again, I share with my friends this channel and I don't really feel ready to share it with them. I'm very terrified of it. If I'm being 100% honest, I'm terrified that they're going to hate me if I make a different decision than they expected. And I don't know. It's just confusing. And I don't even know what decision to make because I feel so lost because I just had this revelation of, hey, maybe 
the other choice would be better. You know, maybe because with the other choice, it has more to do with having a fresh start and stuff. And maybe that would be better for me, you know? Now I'm realizing that maybe I was too attached and hung up on one decision that I completely neglected the idea of the other decision and what that could bring me and the pros and cons of that. And that's what happens when you feel too attached and hung up on something. And it almost feels as if I'm breaking up with where I where I once was and what made me happy before it almost feels like a breakup and it sucks because I really hate change and also to add on I just what if I make the wrong decision by breaking up with this path that I was so sure that I was gonna go down you know <sighs> It's just hard because I know it's my life, but at the same time, I don't know exactly what's going on and I'm scared because I just want to be happy, you know? And I feel so attached to my friends that I don't want them to leave i don't want them to drift apart again i don't want that happening and i feel as if if i make the other decision then that's going to happen you know because probably my friends are going to end up hating me because i was so i was kind of building up that hey i'm going to make this decision if it works out and stuff and now just all of a sudden, just yesterday actually, I had the revelation of, hey, maybe this other decision would be better for me. And now I'm just so confused and lost about life because I'm just like, I thought I knew what I wanted, but now other things are getting presented to me and just shifts in reality that kind of made me realize that maybe what I thought I wanted wasn't actually what I wanted or needed, if that makes sense. What I thought I wanted may not actually be the best for me, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, and it sucks because I had so many, I literally had so many arguments and kind of just... Um, issues with my parents due to conflicting views about it and now I'm actually thinking of the other side I feel as if I was too stubborn before and now it just like what was even the point of fighting when I'm thinking of making another decision anyways like what was the point of even standing up for myself And I almost feel bad for even standing up for myself because I'm I'm thinking of doing the decision that they wanted me to anyways, not just because they say, I don't think it's just because they said that um, my parents had that point of view. I don't think that's the only reason why really it's mainly because I had this revelation of a new start and also just other factors but yeah and I guess my values have changed a lot over this past year just this past couple months my values have changed a lot and yeah, it's scary, actually, because I never got closure from, you know, the choice that I might not be making anymore. I never got closure from it, and it sucks, because I just wish I had closure. And also to add on, I don't even know if it's the right decision to make the other decision. So, uh, 
I don't know. I feel like I... I feel like I should just say straight up what it is, but at the same time, again, I don't want to... I, I don't really want to say it on my YouTube channel before I talk to my friends about it. Or I kind of admit it to them, but I'm just scared to because I... I don't want to lose them, is the thing. They're the only people who I feel as if I belong with, and I'm just afraid, okay? I'm afraid that I hate, I hate being abandoned. I hate abandoning stuff. I love the nostalgia of what life was like before, and it feels scary to jump into another chapter of my life, but... At the same time, I feel as if it would be best for me and my growth as a person and just having more power in myself that, hey, I am enough and stuff and that, um, I guess I don't, I don't, um, I guess in a way I don't necessarily need, like, other people in order to make friends or accomplish my dreams or something because I've always felt as if it was other people who kind of propel me to those things while I never feel as if I've accomplished much at all really um yeah but there we go yeah I'm just feel emotional about, about everything and confused and my one friend sent me this piano song yesterday and I got super emotional. It was called like, I think it was by Cuppin or Cuppin or whoever. It was called Nocturne OP9.9 .9, and then NO.2 and yeah, I literally cried because I was just feeling the nostalgia and the fact that I might be leaving behind a life that was good for me and a place that was good for me. I might be leaving that behind and it sucks because I loved, I felt like I actually belonged and I loved my friends and I loved everything. And trust me, it's a really hard decision to make because I have to do it, there's a time crunch for it, and I need to make the decision pretty much, and it's scary because <sighs> I just, if I choose the other decision, then I'm going to miss them so much. Like, I'm not even kidding. Uh, I'm trying. Whew, there we go. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to cry as much and I don't I don't want to be a crime as well doing this in show type video so yeah um I know I've cried on camera before but I feel as if I need to be more emotionally um, mature about that and not cry on camera because I don't know <laughs> I just feel weird about crying on camera sometimes even though I've cried on camera still I just feel weird about it because it's one of those things where people might feel uncomfortable by it or they may think that I'm crying to get attention or something like that. No, I'm, I'm just a crier, but I can see where you're coming from. Sometimes I even feel uncomfortable when p other people are crying on camera and then I have the thought of they're seeking attention and then like I have this bad thought about it but I think it's because I do it and I think to myself people are probably thinking that I'm seeking attention or I beat myself up for crying on camera pretty much and I think that's the reason why I judge other people too who are crying on camera sometimes and also because I'm a I can be a bit unempathetic if we're being honest so yeah I don't know, um, because sometimes I, I think to myself, well, this problem isn't really that big of a deal, even though, well, when it comes to, like, other people's problems or just my own problem, and 
you know, it's a shitty thing to think. And I'm trying to work on that, work on being more empathetic and not thinking those sorts of things. And it's something I still need to work on. I don't know 100% how to work on it necessarily, but I guess it's just counteracting any, like, unempathetic thoughts, I guess. But I don't really know because it's kind of just in my nature to do so, so. But also, to add on, I really need to fix it. It's not just in my nature either. It's something that I can work on and stuff. But I'm just saying I'm more susceptible to it because I have I have mental illnesses. Or I might, I might have mental illnesses that stump my empathy levels, so it makes it harder for me, in a way. But, at the same time, that's not really an excuse to be thinking unempathetically in situations, too. So, I really need to step it up in that region. Which, I don't really know how to do that, I guess. The ways that I've been trying to do it is just by watching more people on YouTube who are being vulnerable and stuff and trying to feel them. Because and when it comes to certain things, I'm very empathetic about the whole thing. While with other things, I'm not as empathetic about it, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, if it's, I don't know. Or sometimes even if it's a bigger problem, which I find if it's like this grand problem or like something that I could never really, mm, if it's a bigger problem to where it's very detrimental, for example, death or a natural disaster or something, then I do feel bad like in a lot of situations but also there's another part of me that's thinking to myself my problems don't even matter because their problems are bigger so therefore sometimes I get a bit um defensive about that in my head but also I feel as if especially when it comes to someone dying for someone else or or someone, a loved one dying, um, a, a loved one of someone else dying, or when it comes to people being homeless, or people, just that sort of thing, I feel more empathetic towards those types of situations, I guess, because I know that that would be really rough to deal with, all of that shit. I've never really had to deal with, well, I have had to deal with the death, but that's about it. I haven't really had to deal with anything else along those lines, so therefore I feel so bad for people who have to go through that sort of thing, or people who have to be in fear for their safety and stuff. That's a really scary thing that I can't even imagine going through if I'm being 100% honest so I I feel more bad in that sense but also again there's a part of me that's a bit defensive thinking well then my problems don't really matter you know um which, I mean that's not true I know but that's just what I'm thinking in my head and then when it comes to smaller problems for other people might have. For example, if someone's feeling sort of anxiety about something that I would deem as more a smaller problem, even though it's not like smaller, like we shouldn't be, you know, having this hierarchy of problems sort of thing, then I sort of don't, I'm not as empathetic towards it. For example, if, um, I don't know, just if people are, I can't think of a really that great of an example, honestly. Um, I guess when it comes to anxiety and depression that's um, more normalized, I sort of feel 
unempathetic about it just because it's something that I have to deal with every single day to in ways that are more um stigmatized and I guess the thing is is that for me at least I kind of reason other people who people can relate to more and people can accept more for their mental illnesses while with me honestly with a lot of the mental illnesses that I have people don't wouldn't really accept me for my symptoms while when it comes to people with um more like normalized cases of anxiety and depression um then they're able to be accepted for it because people can understand it more while when it comes to some of my mental problems people do not understand and <laughs> yeah i've i've been called a i've been called selfish and an asshole before so yeah and yeah well actually not really not really that much i'm just thinking of one particular comment where someone called me selfish and stuff so yeah <laughs> it wasn't on youtube it was uh, i just did this random forum where i basically posted about a, a situation whatever that i was going through because i was kind of desperate for um getting advice at the time so yeah yeah but i don't know it i don't know I guess I really need to work on not um not letting my envy get to me too because I feel as if the main reason why I feel angry or unempathetic towards other people sometimes is I think it's because it's usually people who get more attention for their suffering if I'm being 100% honest it's mainly people who get you know told that hey they're actually they get the reassurance of hey you're a good person and I can relate to you or I love what you're doing and stuff. I think it's more of that sort of thing where I feel as if since I'm not, um, since I've never really gotten the same attention as them, then it says something about my worth as a human being and my value as a human being. And I don't want my value to be diminished because then I'll feel horrible and depressed and horrible about myself. So therefore, I sort of, in my head... Again, in my head, I don't say this to other people, but I think to myself, I think kind of dismissive things because I'm thinking to myself. They, they get the attention that I want, and I guess I envious and resent them for that. Um, hmm. Yeah. And... I'm more learning how to not seek that validation. Honestly, I think I'm growing better at not necessarily needing um, attention from YouTube and stuff in order to feel happy. Because I remember when I first started, um, or when I first started basically venting about my problems... It was, it was a bit more of something that I honestly did for attention, but now I don't really see it as much in that way. Like, there was always this thing of, oh, well, other people can relate to it and stuff, and it can be helpful, but 
now it's more yeah i just want to update you guys and help you guys know that you aren't alone and just document my life Instead of feeling this need to have guidance or anything, because honestly, I don't, I don't really need guidance. <laughs> um, I appreciate any feedback or guidance, but I'm more of the type that just likes doing what I want to do. I don't really like being told what to do if I'm being 100% honest, which I know is a bit stubborn. I'm a stubborn person, but still I just don't like other people telling me what to do because it's my life and I can do whatever I want as long as I'm not hurting someone else or myself then I think I'm completely fine I mean honey I've hurt myself and others a lot but still um and also I'm I'm trying to stay on schedule actually but I'm having problems with that. I'm basically using Google Calendar in order to make a schedule and to plan everything out. But the thing is, is that I'm falling off that wagon sometimes because I end up getting depressed and stuff. <laughs> like today. Um, I'm using it mainly to not maladaptive daydream anymore. But the thing is, is that sometimes I still fall back into it to where... I listen to music instead of following my schedule that I made for myself, and then I end up feeling terrible about it, but then I just keep on going down this rabbit hole of just doing that because, well, I did it for the first time and it just doesn't even matter, so therefore, I'm just going to continue doing it. It's one of those things where I'm procrastinating doing the right thing. I'm sitting there like, Oh, well, I could always do this later, or I could always follow this later. I could always change later. But the thing is that if I don't change now, then I'm never going to do it. I'm just going to keep on with the same habit. And I think to myself, well, I have all the time in the world. But at the same time, how do I know that I have all the time in the world? If we're being 100% honest, I could die today. I could die tomorrow. I could die any day, pretty much. And there's really no set time in order to do something. And I really just need to do it right now instead of just saying, well, I could always start it up tomorrow. No thing. <laughs> because, honey, I say that every day to myself. And it's horrible. I, I'm, not, I'm not that great at getting motivation if I'm being 100 and honest. And I'm not that great at self-discipline. I'm getting a bit better at it. But at the same time, I still struggle a lot with it. And it's just a issue with me where I really want to achieve things. But a part of me just doesn't want to and just wants to be lazy and not do anything. So, therefore, I just teeter-totter back and forth. That's why sometimes I'll... Um, Sometimes I'll say stuff on this channel of, oh, I'm making this habit choice or I'm making this new decision or something, but then it completely flips the other way. For example, when it comes to the whole not looking at my YouTube analytics as much. Sure, I'm not looking at it as much as, and obsessing about it a lot, but at the same time, I still fall in those, into those traps where... I'm still obsessively looking at it. For example, for the past week or so, I haven't just I haven't just looked at it one time a day. I'm looking at it multiple times a day. And you know, maybe I should be more kind with myself and realize, hey, I don't have to limit it to just one time a day and be that strict about it. It's good that I'm just even not having as much of an obsession as I was because I used to obsess with it so much to the point where I would look at my phone and my analytics pretty much every five minutes or so. And now I don't do that. Now I have hours where I don't even look at it and don't even care, honestly. And it's really nice. And I get to just realize that the progress that I am making is really good. And maybe it's the same thing that I should do with my schedule. You know, I should be able to do that sort of thing. Um, yeah. 
Also, when it comes to my therapist now, I have a pretty good therapist. Um, she's empathetic and stuff like that. She's empathetic like I wanted to repeat and stuff, but I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of realizing that, wait, my phone, I'm going to charge it while I'm recording. Uh. But yeah, wait, is it charging right now? I don't know if it's charging, but I think it's, it should be charging maybe. Mm, yeah, maybe it's charging. I don't know what it's doing, but... Oh, well, well, well. I just can't see the charging thing while on video because it doesn't scroll that way, but it's okay. So, yeah, I'm just... I'm saying I'm coming to... But I'm coming to the realization that with therapy, it's... I don't know. It just... For some reason, it just doesn't, I feel as if it doesn't benefit me as much as I thought it would, I guess. You know, um, here's the thing is that I feel as if I'm a pretty self-reflective person already. And I feel as if I, sure, sometimes I get new perspectives from my therapist and it's a really good thing, but... At the same time, I feel as if I don't really have anything to talk about is the thing sometimes. Like, I have a lot to talk about, but the thing is, is that I don't remember it or don't necessarily know unless they ask me specific questions about it. I just have a hard time with sort of thinking about what would be good to talk about and what I really need to talk about, or how to ask for certain things, because I know how I want to heal. I know what I want. I know what kind of healing would be good for me, or something, or I know the things I need to work on, but I just don't know how to articulate how to work on it because it's more of a mental processes it's not necessarily due to events that are happening in my life right now it's more trying to resolve past traumas and also to add on just trying to again be more empathetic and also be more not having the cognitive distortions that I do sometimes or not being as paranoid or not having as many intrusive thoughts. But the thing is, is that I don't think, I don't know. I just, I don't think that therapy really works that way, maybe. Maybe. I just, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't know what to necessarily talk about because I don't know how to express my mental processes in a way that's actually going to help the therapist understand because I feel as if a lot of therapists think that since certain things are past things that I just, I'm saying that, but I actually move through it, which... I mean, I do tell them that I have moved through some stuff, but that it still bothers me and stuff. And I feel as if people get confused by my communication a lot. So, I don't know. It just, therapy's kind of hard for me if I'm being 100% honest. Talk therapy, it's just not, I can't communicate well really. I'm I'm better at writing than co actually communicating with other people, so it's just hard for me to progress in talk therapy, if I'm being 100% honest, because I don't really, I don't know, just a part of me is also holding back to, because I'm afraid of 
people say the wrong thing because then I know if people say the wrong thing to me then honey I'm going to end up resenting them and it's not a, a good thing and that's something that I need to work on is not being as um I guess not being as scared I mean I have opened up a lot about my intrusive thoughts to this new therapist which is good I have talked about more of the thoughts that I have sort of thing the specific ones that I have and also to add on I've what is it called I've I try to talk about certain things. Okay, I try to talk about certain things that I feel more comfortable talking about certain things with her and stuff. And it feels nice to actually feel comfortable with it. But at the same time, I don't know if it's just because it, there's only been two sessions, but I just don't... I, there's still this fear in me. I don't even know why it's there. I just feel fear because I'm af I'm afraid. And also to add on, I, again, I just don't know what to talk about ever because there is things that, like, trigger me, obviously, but I just don't know what to talk about in the moment. Whenever I'm in a therapy session, my mind kind of just goes blank, which I try to write down certain things that to talk about, but thing is, I don't know. And also the thing is, is that there's so many different triggers that I have throughout the week that it's just, I don't know which specific ones I should prioritize or talk about because the sessions are only 45 minutes or so, or 50 minutes or at the most an hour. So the thing is, is that how am I supposed to talk about everything that happened in the week and everything that triggered me in just that short amount of time? Because I tend to over explain myself because I don't know how to communicate things. And also I tend to, I make pauses and have to think through how to say things. So therefore I'm not, I'm not good at, I'm not good at that, at talking to people <laughs> so I don't know it's a problem where I feel as if I ramble on and on and can't I don't know how to say things in a more concise way because that's just not how I operate I'm more operated in a way where I'm over explaining things and I'm saying things in order for people to understand but they <laughs> I feel as if people still don't necessarily understand even though they probably do understand i'm just overthinking that maybe they don't understand <laughs> i don't know uh, and it's not their fault that i'm a confusing person to understand i just can't communicate well is the thing so i don't know and also i still even though i'm trying to be more open to people there's still this closed offness because again i'm I've been closed off for a while, so obviously it's going to take a while for me to warm up to be more open to other people, but I'm getting better at it. It's just that I'm not 100% there if we're being honest. But it's kind of getting better. But yeah, I'm just afraid. I don't know, I'm always afraid that, <laughs> I'm always afraid that my therapists hate me for some reason. I don't know why. I'm just afraid that they're thinking, oh, this girl is annoying, but they just have to put up with me because I'm, I'm their client or whatever. I don't know. I can never tell when people actually like me or not because I can't read people that well. So, therefore, I, I, I really don't know. Maybe people are just annoyed by me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I think I'm just reading too much into it, though, I am being a bit sensitive about it and kind of having this fear because I actually found a good therapist for me, but 
I'm just afraid that it's not going to work out again, even though I know that it probably is going to work out, but I'm not 100% sure. And also, another thing is that um, CBT therapy doesn't work for me, and I think a part of the reason why that doesn't necessarily work is because um, I have autism and stuff, and... It's hard for me to explain my emotions sometimes. I don't know why I'm feeling certain things or feeling certain emotions or what emotion I'm feeling sometimes. And it can be a problem. I remember with my last therapist, actually, she was a CBT therapist more. And I remember at the beginning, she was like, um, how did you feel in this situation that happened a while ago? It was a traumatic experience. And I was like, thinking so hard and I was like I don't even know and I felt so frustrated because I couldn't think of what I was feeling in the moment and I felt horrible because I was just thinking to myself maybe I'm just fucking dumb but at the same time how am I supposed to know like that was a while ago and also to add on I'm not good at knowing how I feel I don't know how to just articulate that I'm getting better because there's um, I'm trying to find, there's this one app actually that I use where it shows different feelings, so it's like low energy and pleasant, high energy, pleasant, low energy, unpleasant, high energy, unpleasant, and it has these different categories, so you can choose if you feel happy, so pleasant, you can choose if you're feeling in a good mood, then you're feeling pleasant, so you can click on one of those, and then if you're feeling unpleasant, then you can click on one of those, and then there's different words that have to do with it, and that has helped me a lot, but beforehand, yeah, I did not know how to know what emotion I'm feeling, and even right now, I don't know what emotions I'm feeling necessarily, so I need that app in order to help me to no but honestly I I'm going to make a video on you know um mental health apps that I've used because those have actually they've helped me tremendously there's a couple that have really helped me a lot like that one that I just told you about and ah yay yay I'm glad that I'm actually healing and I feel myself I'm not rambling on and on to my friends as much and I'm not being as defensive anymore and I'm not getting as triggered by things and it's just like yay I'm actually healing now which is good but I don't want to jinx it and then end up doing shit because that ends up happening where sometimes I think I'm doing so well but then all of a sudden it just crashes down but it's fine <laughs> And also, I just recorded a video with my dog. I was feeling that because I was having, again, I was stressed out about the situation that I talked about at the beginning, how I'm possibly making a different decision that I planned before, and it's kind of scary and making me scared and stressed out and depressed, so therefore, I'm just feeling a lot of emotions, and then my OCD was just really bad. And my intrusive thoughts sort of thing that I think are OCD related, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think they are. But here's the scary thing is that I never know if it's a real urge or if it's an intrusive thought. So, for example, if I have a thought that's involving the theme of pedophilia, then I don't know if that's an actual urge or if it's just an intrusive thought. I really do not know. And... I'm just, I don't know, I don't know, like, what if it's actually a real urge, then would people love me still, would people be okay with that, or is it just an intrusive thought, I don't know really, and it's scary, because, uh, I just, I hope it's an intrusive thought, thing, but also I know that there's a possibility that maybe it is just real urges and I'm just it's scary because I don't I don't want that to be the case but
But also to add on, it's just one of those things where I keep thinking, thinking to myself. I'm wanting to research about it more in order to know, hey, is this an intrusive thought or is this an urge? But then the thing is, is that if I keep on researching it, then the whole fear, if it's a fear, then it's just going to get worse, which I think it's fear. But the thing is that you never know because the brain is a little crazy sometimes. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. And I feel like I need to accept it either way. Even if my intrusive thoughts are real or just, I'm still the same person regardless and it's okay. But I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to accept myself. Because the thing is, is that sure, I could accept myself, but also... There's a lot of stigma in accepting myself, and I feel as if I can't because accepting myself more means that I'm almost thinking that I, it means that I'm letting myself, like, get away with, um, things, like, things that might be bad thought processes or something, or that might be detrimental to me, even though I know that and I'm not making an excuse in order to not heal. I'm just trying to accept myself for who I am right now so that I'm able to move forward and make the changes that I do and heal from mental problems, whatever they are. I don't Again, I'm not 100% sure, but I have lots of suspicions on what it is, so... Yeah, that's about it, though. Um, I have to go eat dinner because actually my mom said that there was dinner about 10 minutes ago, so I'm gonna go, but thank you for sitting and chilling with me, sitting and chilling with, um, Chrissy. So, yeah. I'll see you guys later. Bye!